Hey everyone, sorry I didn't post a continuation of the story till now, I've just been rather busy with a lot of things lately I started to rack my brain for other tales of Bram's antics. I talked with all of the players from that game and the DM for their memories of the shit that we got into there I don't know why, but I find myself unable to properly articulate a lot of stories in great detail like I did earlier, because how could I ever hope to describe a full campaign? I suppose I could do a highlights reel for you, kind of like the old man Henderson stories. I don't even know if you'll still be interested, but I guess if I were to tell you any more stories than the one to start with would have to be what I like to call reverse agonitis. I will also continue my crusade to not use the classic text, because at this point it's kind of a tradition for me I love my DM. I really do. She's a very creative spirit, and likes to get into a lot of things and ideas. Sometimes this culminates in her coming up with really cool, unique and powerful ideas to revolve quests around. Other times, she gets really passionate and into ideas that I would qualify as the classics you know the things I'm talking about. Stories like save the princess from the dragon, or let go into this random dungeon with monsters that really have no reason to be there are in it. You know, classic fantasy and DD kinda stuff with this in mind. Imagine my surprise when the king of the kingdom we were in heard about our adventures and asked us to save his daughter from a red dragon that stole her away. My first thought was really, there has to be more than that. That's too simple. I brought this up to the DM but she seemed to be legit about it I was a bit skeptical still because although I knew that she sometimes liked the sort of sappy, straightforward adventures, my DM can be sadistic at times. So I remained cautious wouldn't you have guessed it? I was right after all. Based off of past experiences, I knew that when my DM creates simple stories, she makes up for it with interesting design. The journey deeper and deeper into the red dragon's lair was something altogether unexpected. The way into the dragon's main chamber took us past magical traps. Monsters that the dragon had summoned enthralled enslaved into guarding its horde, magical traps. And more than a few moments of jump to this legend if you fail you fall into the lava when we finally got to the main chamber. Our collective magic ability, and Bram's scroll of dispel magic, worked to deactivate the magical ward around the chamber, which would have worked to wake the dragon if we had crosses it. Now, I was the only one that had experience playing with my DM over a long period of time, and I was beginning to understand her habits. One thing she liked to do was always throw in a boss into every dungeon. Now, we had fought and killed a fire land when basically less powerful dragons that can't fly earlier in the dungeon. And that land when nearly killed all of us she never went into how strong the dragon was and we had just assumed that it would be adjusted to our level. Now call me mistrustful, but I started to think if the dragon is strong enough to enslave the thing that nearly killed us, do we really stand a chance? I quickly realized that we had already fought the boss, and that we were never meant to kill the dragon. And I quickly told this to the rest of the group. But the folk decided that Bram was just being Bram again and didn't believe me. I huffed and started to think quickly, and eventually came up with a brilliant plan I just asked them to try it my way first, and if it didn't work then the dragon would only eat me. They seemed to like this idea the moment we stepped foot into the main chamber. My fears were only confirmed when I saw the dragon, with the princess asleep and chained to a wall only a few meters from it. Keep in mind that I DM myself. So I know how powerful a dragon is based off size. This one was gargantuan, and as a red dragon that would put its challenge rating at least somewhere firmly above level 20, which we were clearly not with Bram's balls of steel. He went to work. I asked the wizard to teleport away and get me all the red paint that he could find, and to make it as glossy as possible. He returned not long afterwards and I began the single dumbest thing I've ever done in my life I started to paint the dragon with a couple of hours and the single luckiest move silently check of my life, and multiple sleight of hand checks. Bram successfully painted the scales of the red dragon's arms, back, and tail a bright and glossy red. With a good cough, I woke the beast excuse me, my good fellow, I called out, the dragon woke up, its giant eyes glaring at me, and it rose towering over me. It growled in its slow and intimidating way and looked at me you've come a long way to die, little one. It said oh, terribly sorry, I said, using an upper crust British accent for some reason. Thinks a hammerlock from Borderlands. I hate to disturb you, but your attendants let me in, as I have urgent news for you. The dragon cocked its head at me, 
still clearly intent on killing me, but at least now it would be willing to hear what I had to say. It commanded me to speak before I would die. Very good sir. You see I've been studying great whims for the longest of time, and I've come to the conclusion that there is a disease spreading amongst them, and I've tracked it down. I believe you've contracted it. The dragon was skeptical, but after I encouraged to look at its scales, it saw the paint what is this? It demanded angrily reverse agenitis. I said, making it up off the top of my head. I then proceed to explain to it that the disease caused dragons to revert in age. It would make them grow smaller and smaller, until eventually they would revert into a fetus and die. The dragon didn't fully believe me, but after succeeding in a bluff check, it was willing to let me go, as I had convinced it that such a cure needed more time and research, and that it was safer off trusting me losing nothing than killing me and possibly dying. I encouraged the dragon to go back to sleep, which it obliged, and I went back to work the others could see my plan. They thought it was crazy, but were willing to roll with it. The wizard prepared every teleport spell he had to get us more supplies. While the wizard did that, the sorceress and necromancer proceeded to paint the rest of the dragon while it slept, using magic to decrease their chance of waking it. The bard, in the meantime used makeup, with which he chose to be proficient with by complete accident, to make both Bram and the willing princess to appear 10 years older when we were all done. The dragon was a glossier and brighter red. For those that don't know, when dragons are first born, their scales are glossy, shiny and bright, but as they grow older they get duller. You can see where that took us now. After that, the wizard cast a spell on the princess and Bram that made them grow twice their normal size. I again approached the dragon oh gods, it's working faster than I could have imagined. The dragon woke with a start, and immediately noticed the increased size of the princess and I had looked as though it were confused and clearly scared what is this. It said, clearly agitated the disease is spreading, you're already growing smaller, reverting in age. The dragon was clearly fearful at this point, but continued to remain in denial, but made a point to ask how my research into a cure was going. I then said that it would be good, and that a cure could come within a few years, long enough to save it. Whether it fully believed me or not, I had freaked the dragon out enough to go with what I was saying regardless. It then agreed to get more rest, and it went back to sleep. The last stage of our plan then went into action. The bard made the princess and Bram look even older through makeup, and the others now painted the dragon with a glossy shine in order to make its scales look younger. Lastly, they put an illusion over Bram, the princess, and the treasure hoard to make it all look much much bigger to the dragon. At this point, the princess and Bram were the size of storm giants, repeating everything. I went to the dragon, a single vial full of a water in my hand I've returned. Bram exclaimed the dragon woke with a start, and at this point was in full blown panic mode when it saw how big we and the horde were. It was so scared that it didn't even bother to use detect magic checks to find the illusions. It was totally convinced cure me. It began to angrily demand, without hesitation. I showed it the vial and assured it that it would work the dragon leaned its head down and Bram poured it into its eyes like a water dropper. Again, it was so scared it didn't even bother on doubting Bram. Just grateful for it all the dragon thanked him, but Bram told it that it should immediately relocate itself after a few months of rest for the elixir to take effect, claiming that if it stayed it might get infected again. The dragon agreed and went to sleep at that point, we rescued the princess. And Bram was also able to assure the king that the dragon would never be an issue again. Bram, you devious wee fuck, I have to give it to you. Like, you know, I think that was a solid reimagination of a classic Save the Princess tale. You know what I mean? It's one we've heard millions of times. And, like, you know, I thought it was good. But the only thing is, right, sadly, this is the end for Bram. As the writer hasn't actually written any more. Um, it's been about eight months. So, look... Sadly, I know only two wee short stories about Bram, but it would be a shame not to have done it, you know what I mean? Um, I think, like, you know, just because you don't have it all doesn't mean, like, you know, it's over. You know, we might see more. So, like, I'm going to keep an eye out for stories of Bram. Uh, definitely, I'll keep that in mind, because you guys really enjoy him, and I really enjoy him, so why the fuck not? Um, like, you know, who doesn't want to hear him work, like, you know, if, you're, if it's something you're already into, fucking sweet. But no, um, as I say, the best way to 
know when the next one's out is to click that wee notification bell, subscribe, all that other good stuff. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, just check that stuff out. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we might see another brand video in the next couple of months. Well, I hope hopefully not months, a couple of weeks, let's say. But we'll just see. Um, I'll keep digging and hope for the best. But look, as always, guys, I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?